I paid almost $800 for this Snap-on electronic torque wrench. So the question is, is this torque wrench, which cost around $80, just as good? Well, let's find out. And the first test, I'll measure the torque accuracy at 50, 150, and 250 foot-pounds. I'll then cycle each torque wrench 1,000 times, and then we'll test them once again to see which ones are the most accurate. In addition to testing the torque wrenches, let's also test this torque adapter, which is made by AC Delco and costs $64. It does come with the needed batteries. It has a torque range from 25 to 250 foot-pounds. It's supposed to measure torque in both clockwise and counterclockwise directions. It has an audible buzzer that confirms when the preset torque value is reached. It even comes with a certificate of calibration. And the AC Delco torque adapter is made in Taiwan. Weight is sometimes an indicator of quality, and the AC Delco weighs 202 grams. Does it really matter if a torque wrench is off by a few pounds? The load cell will be keeping track of the torque. Let's torque down a bolt to 40 foot-pounds. At 40 foot-pounds of torque, the clamp load is now at 7,514 pounds. I've added 10 more pounds of torque for a total of 50 foot-pounds. And we're now at 9,022 pounds, so adding 10 foot-pounds of torque added about 1,500 pounds of clamp load. This torque wrench calibration tool has done an amazing job, but I just spent $1,800, which includes taxes, for a brand new torque wrench calibration tool that's incredibly accurate. It'll be nearly impossible for me to apply right at 50 foot-pounds, but that's the target. And the tester shows 50.58 foot-pounds, and the adapter is showing 49.6. That's a 0.98 foot-pound error on the first attempt. The second attempt is a bigger miss with a 1.53 foot-pound difference between the tester and the torque adapter. There's a 2.96 delta on the third attempt, and the fourth attempt has a gap of 1.2 pounds. So the average error is 1.67 pounds for the torque adapter. I think I'm saying this correctly, but at a price of $78 is this sewer cut brand. Now this torque wrench claims to have a range of 3.8 to 250.8 foot-pounds. They claim it has an accuracy of plus or minus 1%, which apparently is even more accurate than the $790 snap-on. All of the torque wrenches we'll be testing have a half-inch drive. In track mode T, the indicator value changes in real time. They claim the digital display has a backlight which has been upgraded. It even comes with a certificate of calibration. To install the batteries, just unscrew the end cap and insert the batteries. And a sewer cup is made in China. And a sewer cup weighs 1,510 grams or 3.33 pounds. The sewer cup actually didn't do too bad with a delta of 0.59 foot-pounds on the first attempt and 0.57 pounds on the second. 0.27 on the third attempt is the best yet. 0.77 on the fourth attempt is still pretty good, and the sewer cup is perfect on the fifth and final attempt. At a price of $80, is this a Zoom brand? They claim an accuracy of plus or minus 2%. They claim it stays precise for over 15,000 uses without needing recalibration. They claim the ratchet head has 72 teeth for a 5 degree arc swing. The instructions for use are right on the blow molded case, which seems like a really nice idea. The green light comes on at 85-90% to 90 of torque value, and the red light at 100%. The certification of calibration report does look a little bit suspect. They say it's certified and calibrated. That's right, calibrated and not calibrated by an inspector named Time. According to the report, this thing is incredibly accurate. And the Suzume is made in China. And the Suzume weighs 1,540 grams or 3.395 pounds. The Suzume is off by 1.44 foot-pounds on the first attempt and is off by 2 pounds on the second. 1.54 foot-pounds on the third attempt is not good and neither is 1.19 on the fourth attempt. And it's 1.62 on the final try with an average error of 1.57 foot-pounds. At a price of only $84, is this Viva brand? Torque range is supposed to be accurate to plus or minus 2%. They claim it has a torque range between 25 and 250 foot-pounds. It can measure in newton meters, inch pounds, foot pounds, and kilograms per meter. The kit comes with a quarter inch and 3 h inch adapters. Three working modes include real time, peak, and preset memory. It has a built-in backlight providing crystal clear readability even in low light conditions. According to the inspection certificate, this thing is almost perfect. Inspected by a guy named Alex, which seems like a pretty common name in China. And the Viva is made in China. The Viva weighs 1,574 grams or 3.47 pounds. The Viva is only off by 0.1 foot-pounds on the first attempt and 0.21 on the second. 0.16 on the third and 0.18 on the fourth, just over half a pound error on the fifth try. And this is by far the most accurate torque wrench yet. At a price of $90 is this Kubis brand. They claim it has a working range from 3.76 to 250.8 foot-pounds. It has a buzzer and LED. They claim plus or minus 2% accuracy in clockwise direction. According to the inspection certificate, this appears to be a very accurate torque wrench. It has five measurement modes including foot-pounds, inch-pounds, newton-meters, kilograms per centimeter, and kilograms per meter. They claim each torque wrench undergoes 20,000 accuracy tests. And the Kubist is made in China. 
and it's 1,478 grams or 3.25 pounds for the Koo Beast. The Koo Beast is also pretty accurate with an average error of 0.37 on the first attempt and 0.09 on the second try. 0.48 on the third try and 0.27 on the fourth is pretty good. And 0.6 on the fifth attempt is good enough for second place behind the Viver. At a price of $115 is this A-Torque brand. The torque range is from 25 to 250 foot-pounds. Unlike the previous ones, this one is electronic but also uses a click-style mechanism. It measures in foot pounds, inch pounds, and newton meters. Reversible ratchet for both clockwise and counterclockwise operation. The power button is the red button, and the green one is for setting the units. The claim and accuracy of plus or minus 3% clockwise and 6% counterclockwise. According to the certificate of calibration, this is definitely not as accurate as some of the other brands. And the E-Torque is a product of Taiwan and finished in mainland China. And the E-Torque weighs 1,722 grams or 3.79 pounds. The E-Torque is a click-style torque wrench and it overshot the target by 0.65 foot-pounds on the first attempt and 0.79 on the second. 0.63 on the third, 1.09 on the fourth, and 0.74 on the fifth attempt. At a price of $140 is this gear wrench brand. It has a 72 tooth ratcheting mechanism and they claim a five degree arc swing. According to the certificate of calibration, it appears to be a very accurate torque wrench. They claim a torque accuracy of plus or minus 2% clockwise and plus or minus 3% counterclockwise. It requires three AAA batteries and the batteries are not included. It has a target torque alert to give you a warning as you approach the target torque. It has a vibrating handle, a buzzer, and a solid LED light. The units include newton meters, foot pounds, inch pounds, kilograms per meter, and kilograms per centimeter. And a gear wrench is made in Taiwan. And a gear wrench is pretty light at 1,330 grams or 2.93 pounds. Gear wrench is way over target by almost 2 pounds on the first try and 0.78 on the second. 0.9 on the third, 1.14 on the fourth, and 1.23 on the fifth, and the gear wrench trails a sewer cup, Viver, and Koo Beast. At a price of $141 is this Craftsman brand. It has a torque range from 50 to 250 foot-pounds. It has an LED backlit screen. The units include newton meters, inch pounds, foot pounds, and kilograms per centimeter. Buy material handle for added comfort during extended use. The Craftsman does come with a certificate of calibration. And the Craftsman is made in Taiwan. The Craftsman weighs 1,512 grams or 3.33 pounds. Craftsman is off by 0.7 pounds on the first try and is perfect on the second try. A 0.56 error on the third try, 0.25 on the fourth, and 0.29 on the fifth attempt. That moves the Craftsman into third place behind the Koo Beast. At a price of $205 is this SK Tools brand. It's supposed to have a range from 12.5 to 250 foot-pounds. It requires two AA batteries which are included. It's supposed to have an accuracy of plus or minus 2% clockwise and plus or minus 3% counterclockwise. When the specified torque value is achieved, green light is for 90% and red light is for 100%. The certificate of inspection values are printed right on the case. It also includes a printed certificate of calibration. And the SK Tools is made in Taiwan. The SK weighs 1,532 grams or 3.37 pounds. The SK is off by more than a foot-pound on the first try and 0.55 on the second. 0.84 foot-pounds on the third, 0.84 again on the fourth, and 0.9 on the fifth attempt. At a price of $227 is this DeWalt brand. The DeWalt is supposed to have a torque range between 50 and 250 foot-pounds. They promise clear readouts on a backlit LED screen. The torque wrench does require AA batteries which are included. Units of measure include newton meters, inch pounds, foot pounds, and kilograms per centimeter. Large LCD screen for fast readouts. The DeWalt does come with a certificate of calibration. And the DeWalt is made in Taiwan. And it's 1,496 grams or 3.3 pounds for the DeWalt. DeWalt missed the target by 0 0.6 down on the first and 0 0.54 on the second attempt. 0 0.71 on the third, 0 0.71 again on the fourth, and just over a foot pound on the fifth attempt. I paid $370 plus tax and shipping for the Harbor Freight Icon, and Harbor Freight sent me this massive tile saw. Harbor Freight has very friendly and helpful customer service agents, but their phone call hold times and the return process definitely needs improved. Unlike the other brands, this one does have a flex head. 72 teeth for an arc swing of around 5 degrees. The torque ranges from 12.5 to 250 foot-pounds. It's supposed to be accurate within plus or minus 2% clockwise and 3% counterclockwise. It provides unit of measures in foot-pounds, inch-pounds, newton meters, and kilograms per meter. It does include a certificate of calibration. And the Icon is made in Taiwan. The Icon's by far the heaviest yet at 1,864 grams or 4.11 pounds. The Icon is off by 0.4 foot-pounds on the first try and 0.57 on the second. 0.27 on the third attempt is a lot better, 0.42 on the fourth, and 0.72 on the fifth attempt. So the Icon is off by just under a half foot-pound error on average. 
At a price of $790 before shipping, handling, and tax is this Snap-on brand. Just like the Icon, the Snap-on has a pivoting head. It has a torque range from 15 to 300 foot-pounds. It has a dual 80 ratcheting head is supposed to offer 4.5 degree arc. The torque accuracy is supposed to be 2% clockwise and 3% counterclockwise. They claim a long battery life of 80 hours of continuous use. Measurement modes include foot-pounds, inch-pounds, newton meters, kilograms per meter, and angle. Four different alert modes include LCD, dual LED, audible, and vibration. According to the Certificate of Calibration, the Snap-on appears to be extremely accurate. And the Snap-on is made in USA. The Snap-on's a little bit lighter than the Icon at 1,804 grams or 3.97 pounds. The Snap-on is only off by 0.12 foot-pounds on the first attempt and scored perfect on the second attempt. Very impressive! The Snap-on missed by only 0.1 on the third try, 0.02 on the fourth, and 0.05 on the fifth attempt to move into the lead. Let's see if these electronic torque wrenches are just as accurate as a click-style torque wrench. I tested click-style torque wrenches a while back and the Snap-on was the winner. It's been cycled over 1,000 times, but it's still very accurate. So let's see how the Snap-on compares to the other brands. And the Snap-on is a heavy shed at 1,918 grams or 4.22 pounds. The Snap-on click style torque wrench has had a lot of use and it's off by 0.17 on the first try and 0.66 on the second, 0.57 on the third, 0.71 on the fourth, and 0.61 on the fifth attempt. So the Snap-on electronic torque wrench came out on top with an average error of 0.04 foot-pounds. Viva finished in second place at 0.24 foot-pounds and the Craftsman and the Kubis tied for third at 0.36. Torque wrench feedback, handle length, and sensor speed affected my accuracy and I was able to come the closest to hitting the 50-pound target with the electronic Snap-on with an average of 50.2 foot-pounds. I was almost as accurate with the SK at 50.26 and 50.29 with the DeWalt. Standard deviation shows how spread out the numbers are or which torque wrench is the most consistent. And the Snap-on is by far the most consistent with the standard deviation of only 0.04 foot-pounds. The DeWalt and the Icon tied for second place at 0.15. All the torque wrenches should be within 2% or within one pound of the torque wrench tester. Out of five attempts, seven of the 13 torque wrenches did not make a single mistake. The Proto Tester has very fast electronics and I can tell that some of the torque wrenches do not. I noticed that some of the displays on some of the torque wrench testers lag. Definitely not perfect science, but I'll apply a very short burst of torque and the tester is showing 114.8 foot-pounds and the adapter is only showing 70. The second attempt is off by even more at 137 on the tester and only 81.6 on the adapter. The sewer cup has a lot faster sensor than the adapter and the tester is showing 124.2 and the sewer cup is showing 119.98 foot-pounds. On the second try, 139.9 and 131.96 is almost an 8 pound error. The Suzume has a very slow sensor at 170.5 and 83.4 on the wrench. That's almost a 90 pound error. Again, not perfect science, but 139.4 versus 90.5 is almost a 50 pound error for the Suzume. The Fever struggled in this test with a 72 foot pound discrepancy on the first attempt and a 34.5 foot pound discrepancy on the second attempt. The Kubeast has a pretty fast sensor with a 10.85 foot-pound error on the first try and a 10.17 on the second measurement. The gear wrench seems to have the slowest sensor yet with a delta of 139.4 foot-pounds. On the second try, 113.6 foot-pound error. The Craftsman has a very fast speed sensor with only a 3.1 foot-pound difference on the first try. And a 2.6 foot-pound difference on the second try is even better. SK is almost as fast and accurate as the Craftsman at 4.8 pounds on the first try. And 1.7 pounds on the second attempt is pretty impressive. The DeWalt sensor is very fast with a 1.1 pound error on the first attempt and only a 1 pound error on the second attempt. The Icon sensor isn't nearly as fast as the Craftsman, SK, or DeWalt with a 16.9 foot pound error on the first try. The second attempt is off by 15.5 foot pounds. The Snap-on seems to have a faster sensor than the Icon with only a 1.4 foot pound difference on the first try. The second try is off by a little bit more but still pretty good at 5.4 pounds. Definitely not perfect science, but it's still pretty clear that the Craftsman, SK, DeWalt, and Snap-on have torque sensors that are pretty fast. This seems likely to help the user achieve the desired torque more often than a torque wrench that has a slow torque sensor. I also tested all the torque wrenches at 150 foot-pounds for 5 attempts each. The most accurate torque wrench after 5 attempts is a sewer cup with an average error of only 0.37 foot-pounds. I was pretty shocked for a $78 torque wrench. The Viva finished in 2nd place with an error of 0.46 foot-pounds and Kubi's 3rd at 0.63. Even though some of the torque wrenches might be more accurate, I was not as accurate as the user hitting the 150 foot-pound target. Some of the torque wrenches definitely seem to communicate better with the user than others. A high quality torque wrench doesn't make more than a 2% mistake or 3 pounds. Unfortunately, some of the brands really struggled on this test. I tested the torque wrenches at 250 foot-pounds for 5 attempts each. 
And the Sewer Cup has a best average air rate of only 0.45 foot-pounds. Not bad for a budget torque wrench. In addition to being the most accurate, only six brands did not produce a single torque application error over 2% or 5 pounds. If you have several vehicles and you torque down the lug nuts every few months, it doesn't take long before you have hundreds of cycles on your torque wrench. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle each of the torque wrenches 1,000 times, applying around 150 foot-pounds of torque each time. And it's taken me several hours to apply a total of 12,000 cycles. I've given the torque wrenches around one hour to rest, so let's go ahead and test them once again at 50 foot-pounds. After 1,000 cycles, the AC Delco is off by 1.43 foot-pounds on the first try. It's off by 1.43 on the second and just over 2 on the third. The AC Delco is off by 1.58 on the fourth attempt. The Sewer Cup is still very accurate with an error of only 0.12 foot-pounds, 0.51, 0.39, 0.18, and 0.09. And the Suzume is totally cooked with errors at 2.84 foot-pounds, 2.6, 3.03, 3.57, .03, and 3.09 foot-pounds. The Viva is far less accurate this time as well at 0.35, 1.54, 2.33, 1.13, and 1.25 foot-pounds. The Kubis is actually broken in and it's more accurate than when new. The errors are at 0 0.07, 0 0.12, 0 0.05, 0 0.23, and 0 0.32 foot-pounds. That's pretty impressive for a budget torque wrench. The e-torque is also pretty accurate with errors at 0 0.28, 0 0.6, 0 0.38, 0 0.6, and 0 0.49 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, the Gearance is almost as cooked as a Suzum at 2.45, 4.09, 2.58, 2.54, and 3 foot-pound errors. The Craftsman held up just fine with small errors at 0 0.1, 0 0.16, 0 0.05, 0 0.02, and 0 0.21 foot-pounds. The SK also held up fine with only minor errors at 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.68, 0 0.08, and 0 0.24 foot-pounds. The DeWalt continues to perform very well with only minor misses at 0 0.37, 0 0.12, 0 0.09, 0 0.31, and 0 0.16 foot-pounds. The 1000 cycles did take a small toll on the Icon with errors at 0 0.66, 0 0.51, 0 0.51 again, 0 0.7, and 0 0.53 foot-pounds. The Snap-on continues to perform very well with small errors at 0 0.38, 0 0.1, 0 0.11, a bullseye, and 0 0.28 foot-pounds. So after 1000 cycles, the Craftsman came in on top with an average error of 0 0.11 foot-pounds. The very affordable Kubis finished in second place at 0 0.16 foot-pounds and snap on third at 0 0.17. At 50 foot-pounds, eight of the torque wrenches did not produce a single error in excess of 2%. Unfortunately, the AC Delco, Viver, Suzume, and gear wrench are way out of calibration. Testing the torque wrenches at 250 foot-pounds, the Kubis finished in first place with an average error of only 0 0.44 foot-pounds. Icon finished in second place at 0 0.7 foot-pounds and the Sewer Cup third at 1.16. When it comes to torque wrenches, accuracy is extremely important. The blue bar on the chart represents the average error at 50 and 250 foot-pounds when the torque wrenches were new. The orange bar represents the average error in foot-pounds at 50 and 250 foot-pounds after I cycled the torque wrenches 1,000 times. What's very interesting is that five of the torque wrenches improved in accuracy after 1,000 cycles, which I found pretty surprising. The biggest improvements occurred with the Kubis, DeWalt, and Craftsman, indicating that they benefited from some sort of a break-in period. On the other hand, the Icon, Sewer Cup, and Snap-on started off highly precise and remained very precise even after 1,000 cycles. So just how good are these three brands? Before and after 1,000 cycles, the Sewer Cup, Icon, and Snap-on did not make a single error in excess of 2%. The Kubist only had one error outside of the 2% range. If you're looking for a torque wrench, I would definitely consider purchasing any of these torque wrenches as the budget allows. I guess a person should never judge a torque wrench by its name. I've definitely been proven wrong about the Sewer Cup. Quite an amazing torque wrench for only $78. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.